All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of uh, the Tipples Virtual Wine Tasting with Elizabeth and Jeff Beaudre, the owners of Tipples Brews and Wines. Thanks for joining us. This week, we're going to be drinking, you know, um, I've been running us all around the world, so I finally brought us to a Napa cab. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, we're going to be drinking the Koi Limited uh, Napa Cabernet Sauvignon from that obscure little valley that no one knows about in California that makes a little bit of wine. Um, this is the first vintage of the Limited by, uh, by Decoy. This is um, a brand new product for the company. Uh, it's uh, the Duckhorn Wine. Uh, um, Duckhorn is actually the winery that is the, the over our, the, the, uh, the, uh, the top dog in that group. But, and then they have the Decoy line as well. Uh, so this guy is kind of an in-between. So, um, the, uh, the new lineup from called Decoy Limited, it has a cab, a red blend, both from Napa, and then a Pinot Noir from over in Sonoma, a little cooler area, better for Pinot. Uh, not the only place, they grow plenty of Pinot in Napa, but uh, Sonoma's great. So if you have not already, uh, go ahead and open up your bottle of Decoy Cabernet Sauvignon. I chilled mine down to, actually this one hit all the way down to about 60 this week. So it's gonna need to definitely uh, warm up a little bit for us. I usually prefer closer to 65 to start, but this will get us going. Yeah, and by the way, if you ever over chill a wine, great way to warm it up. Just cup it in your hands and give it a swirl lightly so you don't throw it all over yourself. And it does wonders. It, it will take 10 minutes off. You just give it a little swirl. There's tip number one. <laughs> All right, um, this wine, uh, let's jump over to the slides, please. Okay. My hands weren't cold, now they're cold. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually across the board, the ratings on this it first one, uh, like I said, they've got a cab, a red blend, and Pinot Noir, 90s across the board. Wow. So uh, I'm, it makes sense. I'll talk a little bit about where they're getting their grapes for these guys. And it just, it, um, amazing when you're working with amazing product to begin with and um the uh, the winemakers that really know their stuff uh, to uh renee uh airy is the head winemaker she's magnificent so great uh pairing steak burgers short ribs portobello mushrooms lamb so um i know we see a lot of these things come up again and again when we're drinking red wines except for pinot which kind of takes us in a different area but uh i you yeah, know it it's going to be great with all those things. Hmm. So let's go ahead and jump back to us. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Oh gosh. You know, people ask me, um, and some of you have heard me say this before. They'll ask me what my favorite wine to drink in the world. Well, that's it's a big question, and um, honestly. I do. I have a lot of a lot of my top five is some, some beautiful, wonderful wines. But if I had to pick one ever, and they'll say just one, you have to pick one. All right, it's a very difficult call, but I would, by a small margin, uh, go with Napa Cab. Just like you know, like almost everyone would. I, it's delicious. It's fantastic, uh, and this guy is, is no exception, right? Hmm. All right, I'll, just, I'll, I'll get back to it, but I got to enjoy this for a second. My mouth <laughs> is watering for this delicious one. All right, this guy is um, in California. They require the majority, the vast majority of the wine to be the grape that's on there when they call it a single varietal like Cab. Uh, in this case, this is 90% Cabernet Sauvignon. There is a little bit of Merlot blended in. Hmm. Uh, Cooperage for this guy is 40% a new French oak. Um, the others are not, not new, so they're more neutral. Um, aged for 14 months. So this is the 2018 vintage. What's the, why, why blend in the Merlot? What does it give it? The, all right, so the Merlot will give it some richness. Mm -hmm. So uh, Merlot kind of gets a little bit of like a black plum type quality um, and uh, helps to kind of smooth it out. If you end up with like a really, really, um, well, for example, for this, this fruit comes from the valley floor, which would be kind of round and ripe, but also from the mountainsides. If they, they have it from multiple locations, it's sourced. 
when you get a lot of that mountainside fruit, you're going to get a very wound up, very tight wine that sometimes requires years before you can enjoy it. If you want to loosen it up and make it so that you can pop this open only two years old and enjoy it within five to 10 minutes and it's open and it's giving you what you want, give it some Merlot to relax it. That kind of a thing. It adds richness and it relaxes the tannins. When, when they are bottling, mm. do they know then, okay, this is a wine that's going to be good in or best in five years, or this is a wine that should be open now? Like they know when they're bottling yes. it. Why don't they put that on it? <laughs> I, I, i'm serious i know how much easier that would be for people age this five years i mean we all of our foods have best buy on them yeah it's just <laughs> uh, it comes down to what a lot of these subjects come down to subjects you know so not everyone i mean there are a lot of people mm -hmm. technically uh the vast majority let's go with something a beautiful wine silver oak um napa County. It's an immense, beautiful wine. It could really use some time to age and, and, and mature, but people don't generally do that. They want to get right into it and they love that big, grippy, aggressive. Right, but I'm it, thinking so. the winemaker knows this is when people should really be tasting it at, at its prime. Just slap that right on the label. I don't know. I can't tell you for <laughs> sure. I can't tell you. I, I tell you I one mean, thing maybe I would consider is if, if, if you throw that on there, are those people that are into drinking young wines going to then hold off and not buy, and it. Not buy it at all okay. and wait till it's ready or something. Okay. So I, I, that's, it's just, I can go there. Um, this is, uh, like I said, has some valley floor, which is warmer growth. We'll get into that later. It's a 14 and a half percent alcohol. So it's kind of, you know, it's on the bigger side, mm -hmm. though not that 16% like the Australians gave oh, right. us with that uh, Tate the Ball Buster. So, so, um, tasting and scent notes on this guy, blackberry. Mm -hmm. I can go with some black plum, boysenberry, uh, cassis, which is their very fancy way of saying grapes. <laughs> I always love that. I get black, you know, it's like, hey, so you smell grapes in here, you know, do you? That is shocking. I mean, that's what I'm going to say from now on. It tastes very... Much like grapes to me. It's I mean, it, I, I, I get that they're very fancy grape. I get it, but it's great. Mm -hmm. mm. I do think some wines taste grapeier than others, though. You know, some of them definitely get that like uh, grape juicy or, or candy type of thing out of it, as opposed to others that like, you know, your first instinct would be, you know, like like, like a Chardonnay. My first instinct might be like butter or sugar sure depending on the on the style and that yeah. you're right yeah of course, but yeah. um you're right and it depends on the varietal um there's a varietal uh, called bonarda, bonarda bonarda that is very fruit forward and so yeah that one really jumps out there with like yeah it's like a very dark black grape it's you know it is uh you know it's not just like your average red grape in a grocery store it is cassis is legit it is okay. i just like to tease a little bit about it um uh, kind of a dark chocolate. Anyone getting mm -hmm. that? A little dark chocolate and violets on the floral side. Just tasting a little bit uh, boozier to me than even compared to the Ball Buster a few weeks ago. Like, I, I would think yeah. this has more alcohol than the Ball Buster. It's like, it smells boozier and it, it, it tastes very strong to me compared to other wines we've had. Hmm. That's, um, yeah, it's an interesting observation. It could be Maybe because I didn't drink six beers before we've done this. I, I <laughs> Maybe your senses are, are, are more acute. You're on point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I would say I don't find it boozy. It's um, it's got a nice uh, you know, there's a lot of fruit coming out. It's a lot of dark richness, um, violets, um, cedar. I would I would go cedar, which is common for my oh, yeah. palate um, from um, California cabs, especially the the nicer growth. Mm -hmm. Is it and, because of the where it's grown that you get that you get that kind of sense to it? Yes, yes, it's a combination. It's um combination of factors. You won't always get cedar, but I believe, and I I believe I'm right on this. Um, that the cedar comes more from the the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon grapes that struggle in the higher elevations. So that would be from the mountainside. So they've got uh, 
you know, up there, it's really fast. Um, uh, the, the soil is, is uh, dries really fast. Uh, they've got a lot more wind. Actually, I'll get into that. And it's the character that's built into that struggle up on the, uh, on the mountainside. Now, a lot of times you get um, lavender, especially from Napa. I don't get that in this. I, get the, I think the violets are spot on. I could definitely go violets, like I said, but I, I'm not getting a lavender on this guy. Mm -mm. Hmm. I uh, switched glasses real quick there, but um, upon doing that, yeah, I totally get that like chocolate thing that you were mentioning because I was like, I don't know if I'm getting this, but I was, um, I used this glass a little bit earlier. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna get a fresh glass. But that, that totally comes through now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a discerning enough palette between lavender and violet. But um, that, that chocolatiness definitely does come through now, I think. It's, um, yeah, and the, the tannins, you know, they, they talk about like uh, kind of like velvety tannins. Mm -hmm. I, I find them to be as aggressive as I would possibly define velvety. Because yes. <laughs> I'd say they're yeah. a little more aggressive than velvety in my opinion. I, I'm not getting a bite from them, mm -hmm. but I'm getting an almost bite mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. They've got a punch at the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's call it a nip. Yeah. They're on the line, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get, getting nipped by the tannins. Oh, nip. the yeah, tannins. right. But um, it's got good firm structures. They, they put plenty of mountainside growth in here. Uh, let's mm -hmm. jump over to where this delightful drink comes from. Yeah, okay. It's potent potable. All right, so here's one of my favorite maps. So uh, wine regions in the USA. Um, Obviously, here we are, way over here, right in the, the heart of it all. North Coast, California, Napa. Um, Californian wine growing regions. Uh, we were down in, uh, where is, where's, where are we? This is where we had uh, that wine, uh, the Chronic wine was from down here. Chronic Cellars. Well. Mm -hmm. The Chronic Cellars, the Purple Paradise. Mm -hmm. So now we are up here. Here's Napa Valley. So North Coast is this general appellation. Then we get into Napa. And actually, you can see here's Napa, and we'll, we'll see another one. And then all of this is Sonoma. I don't know wow. if you realize Sonoma is much bigger. I think you showed us a map of that before, mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. OK, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like you see, Sonoma, it's got a lot, a mm -hmm. lot of space. I mean, Napa is not that big for all of the. Uh, Why is it more well known? It know? was the first area to gain international and international reputation for quality oh, okay. because of the judgment of Paris in the 70s. Okay. Mm -hmm. When they, um, there was a competition, which we could go into a whole discussion about that. Um, there was a competition between Napa Valley and French classics. And it was set up as a, basically as a hit job in order to get the Americans to settle down and be quiet about this whole thing of having quality wines. But it was a blind tasting, and the Americans won the tasting, and it blew everyone's mind. No one could believe it, and that was the judgment of Paris. Um, so here we are, uh, Napa. We are drinking from throughout. Basically, the areas we're drinking from tonight, the grapes have come from areas that would be in the darkest <laughs> orange here, in the more classic, classically defined sub. -TV. And so here we have. Um, oh, these are all the little sub regions within Napa. Um, St. Helena, this is where the, uh, the Duckhorn Vineyard is uh, centrally located. This is where they, their original 10 acres is from. And then they are, they're grabbing from all about uh, Spring Mountain, Diamond Mountain for up on the mountainside. They have other property or they're buying? They're buying this. Okay. Their property's all here. Mm -hmm. Um, there and then the valley floor. We're we're talking about Rutherford and Oakville. So this is coming from right along this area here. Um, valley floor. So I can, I've mentioned this a couple of times. Uh, part of this is from valley floor. Warm, lots of sun. Uh, not as much struggle down there. Uh, yeah, it looks very verdant there. Yeah, it's um, yeah. so there's a real increase in, there. You're going to get a lot of ripeness, a lot of sugars. Um, and therefore, a lot of the alcohol comes from what's going on in the floor. Um, you're not getting as much tannin and structure, but you will get a lot of, you know, a lot of delicious flavors too. The, the kind of darker, the darker, more purpley flavors, you know, when you get to that, uh, like I've talked about, uh, 
cassis, blackberry, um, violet flavor. That's going to come from the richer, richer area down here on the on the valley floor. So what? Because we've talked before about that that they need to struggle. Mm -hmm. You need to struggle mm -hmm. in order to produce the, the flavors that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. How is this struggling? This just looks perfect. It, <laughs> that's because there's, this is all vines. <laughs> so okay. there, the vines are flourishing, but it's kind of a, as far as you can see. If you get here, you can see this is dry. So this is very porous soil okay. and it's mineral depleted. You know, it's, it's not okay. mineral rich. So this okay. is, this is still, Kind of a very this sandy, porous, okay. right? That is not a dark, rich soil. Right. But that, so that's how they can okay. they can do it. Which is actually a lot like um, what we saw in um, Chablis, in right. um, you know, over in France, where you know, right. kind of rolling. You know, they they look pretty verdant, mm -hmm. but at the same time, but they're still not. Okay. They're not um, full of dark, rich soil. All right, and mountainside growth. Um, is it the desert. This is the wrong picture. That's the we're, wrong we're gonna move on. Okay. Mountainside growth would be back there. That's last week's picture. There was a mountain and you could see it too. But you can imagine grapes on a mountain. <laughs> anyway, so mountainside growth. Well, let's let's ignore this picture. Um, so cooler, it's cooler up there, it's windy up there. The sun intensity is stronger. Because you're you're uh, you know you're just higher up uh, right. in the atmosphere and there's less atmosphere to block the uh, more damaging rays of the sun. Mm -hmm. It makes thicker skins, produces tighter, bigger tannins, and kind of that flavor character. And because they don't become quite as ripe, this would be more of red fruits and that kind of a thing uh, that you would get in there. Which would be part maybe if you wanted to make a wine like this, why you would put in some Merlot right. is to kind of overcome that maybe cranberry flavor that you might okay. be getting from up there and that's not what you're going for. Hmm. And Do you want me see. to go to the next one? Um, no, actually we can hang out here for a second. Okay. So Napa Valley, well, let's, Napa Valley. <laughs> I was like, we're going to hang out here with the wrong picture. Yeah, we're, we're not going to stay down in South Africa. <laughs> yeah. I could have just gone with it. Sure, that's California. No, yeah, that's not. That, <laughs> like, that doesn't, hmm. That's Spartland. All right, here we are. So Napa Valley, um, best known for Cabernet Sauvignon. So this is, I mean, they're, they're known for almost everything now, but really they're best known for Cab. Uh, 40 miles north of San Francisco, 40 miles east of the Pacific Ocean. Okay. So right there. Um, the border to the west by Sonoma, which we talked about. And we saw. And we saw. Over, uh, over 42,000 acres of grapes are planted in there. There's not a lot else going on in there because it's, it's just so valuable. Then the most valuable thing you can do is... Uh, grow grapes. Yep, yeah, is grow grapes. And um, where am I? Do, 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 do. Oh, um, they actually first planted in the 1850s, and uh, things were going along great. They were uh, they they were there were not a lot of vineyards, but they were up to like a, a million barrels a year. Oh wow! In the 50s. In, in the 1850s through the early 1900s, and then they were hit by phylloxera. And then U.S. prohibition hit and absolutely oh. obliterated the valley. There was almost <laughs> nothing left. And you know what's actually kind of interesting is the grape varietals they were growing in that first run were Italian. So had that never been interrupted, Napa Valley was making Italian grape wines, which I think is kind of cool, instead of French grapes. So um, the recovery began in the 1940s. And one of the most important families to move back there and begin to grow was a little known Italian American family named Mondavi. Ah, <laughs> uh, little known. Yeah. <laughs> one or two of you may have heard of this family. Where are they again? I've never had that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and you know, one thing that's kind of cool about uh, Napa Valley, I think, is that Napa Valley actually, let me see here is let me jump back here 
because the bay goes into there, Napa Valley is cooler and wetter to the south and becomes warmer and drier as you go north. So as you travel north, it gets warmer in Napa Valley. Why? Because of the bay, the breeze from the bay cools yeah. everything down here. Down. That so makes sense. most of the water. Right. So in Napa, and this actually is a, a, um, an AVA that, that straddles Napa and Sonoma, uh, the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir come from down here where it's cooler. Can, can, I'm going to interrupt you, so this technical thing a moment. So is everyone getting weird feedback from us tonight? Like, is there a weird? No. No. Okay. So Kiwi and Bubbles, it's just you guys then. <laughs> I don't know why. Do we have the uh, chat up in case we... Well, we do, but it's this okay. is big right now. Yeah. So, yeah. She just texted me and said we were had weird feedback, so I didn't know if it was exciting. Good. I'm glad it's not everybody. We have the same microphone, so we're in a different location, obviously, so yeah. I didn't know. Anything's yeah. possible. Yeah. Sometimes, right. like, I do Zoom six times a day, so That's good. Like, like, the people just have to leave and reach so keep it to like, exit yeah. and then come back in. Yeah. Put your hand to the front. That's right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Stockhorn Vineyards. Here they are. Um, that is the uh, the original. This this uh, is where the visiting center now, which is um, in Helena, where I was showing you before. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the location of their first ten acres of purchase. So, co-founded by Margaret and Dan Duckhorn in 1976. Oh, that's their actual last name? They're, I yeah, actually just made it up. Yeah, oh, I, that's cool. I learned okay. that today too. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> cool. the duck horns. Okay, very cool. Yep, uh, and they founded it on 10 acres, which is not a ton. So even from the beginning, they were purchasing okay. to, but they, they also have some from their own their own vineyards. Um, their first, so they, they bought it in 76. They had their first vintage in 78, which means they brought in a harvest their first year Right. And because it takes about, you know, it takes two years before you're going to release it. Um, and like I said, they've always sourced grapes, uh, sourced grapes from neighbors that they admire. Um, and, you know, their, their first famous wine, which is kind of cool for, I think it was a Merlot. So the Duckhorn Merlot, Napa Merlot was their first wine that got them a lot of renown. And it actually is incredible and we should probably all drink it because we'll do that one in the future. Duckhorn Merlot is amazing. It's really great. I was literally, she's laughing because I was literally just telling her, I was like, Cab is good, but their Merlot, <laughs> really, where it shines. And then she's like, yeah, yeah, we can have that sometime soon. And then maybe 15 seconds later. <laughs> and I was like, ah. Hey, yo. Yeah. It, it is. It's amazing. It's, it drinks kind of like a cab. It's got nice tight tannins and structure mm -hmm. um, to go with that richness of the Merlot. And it's as a, a, a really beefy, well-made Merlot is one of my favorite drinks in there. Uh, some of the high end ones. Uh, it's just it's a very different beverage. It's fantastic. Uh, let's see here. And uh, their current head winemaker. Um, I'm not going to show. I'm just showing you the Napa tasting room. So that looks like a lovely place to hang out. It and really does. Wine. <laughs> um, um, I like their head winemaker is a woman right now, Renee, uh, Renee Ari. Uh, and uh, she is their only their fourth winemaker ever. Like they, they don't run through. Them. And so she's been with them for many years and she's in charge. And you're sure she's, it's a woman? Because Renee can be a man. Too. Oh, it, it's a woman. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it sounds like there's not. Like Here we go. All right. So that is the rundown of these guys. So what's everyone thinking, tasting, smelling? Super um, cool, super like not, it's got like a little bit of the dryness without being too dry where I don't like it, like heavy and flavorful. Like I hate to be the American that's like, I love Napa Cab, but here I am. Right. No. Yep. I, <laughs> that's the thing. Is, like I told you, people ask me on a regular basis, you know, what is your favorite? And I, here I am, you know, because, oh, the sommelier and how it wants to say something, you know, uh, really intriguing. Uh, Napa Cab's awesome. <laughs> it is. And don't get me wrong. I mean, after that, um, Amarone, 
Oh God, you know I love Amarone. Yeah. I do. Uh, and there, there are plenty others, uh, but um, it's hard to Napa go Cab wrong. Is hard to go Napa wrong with. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, now that mine's warmed up a little bit, one of their tasting notes was a licorice quality. Yeah, yeah. And I'm definitely getting that. Dude, that's, it's not it's not as boozy as it warms up. I, for for me, when it was cold, for some reason, it just, it just tasted very very strong. But now it was, it's kind of mellowing it a little bit. Mm. But that alcohol, I don't know. I I felt it on the nose too. Mm. Uh, when it was cold. Yeah. And I've got like a um. A, a peppercorn quality has come out now. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really nice, For sure. Really nice mm -hmm. spice. Mm -hmm. And that's going to come from up on the hillside as well. So, uh, yeah. A beautiful wine, I think. Outstanding. Uh, I know I know it was on sale this week, but for $30, I mean, keeping in mind that, okay, so you have D, you have duck horn, which duck horn's around $65 a bottle. Um, then you have decoy, which is 25 ish a bottle. And this guy's at 30 um, this actually, this decoy line comes from the Duckhorn vineyards. So, because normally so why, decoy why is sourced is outside of Napa. Okay. Um, but this so, particular but decoy the, is from the But Duck this Horn. decoy, yeah. Okay, so. the other decoys are from Alpha. The other decoys are from outside of Napa. Okay. Uh, this is within Napa, but vented at the Duckhorn vineyard. Okay. And then, um, then the other Duckhorns are, are just uh, slightly different sourcings, okay. also vented very, you know, in the same place as the decoys. I think this is a great opportunity to say some of their stuff. At, uh, to me, this line is uh, an incredible value. I mean, this is this it's really good. This could be a lot more expensive than I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. So, and coming out of Napa, you don't often say that. There, are sometimes you say, "Wow, this is delicious," but why ninety? Why ninety bucks? Right, you know that right. kind of. Thing. Yeah, but I feel like this could be forty-five, fifty. Mm -hmm. Mm Hundred -hmm. percent with you on that. Yep. More? Yes. <laughs> I just like black cherry out of this too. Um, yeah. Like that. That to me is the most prevalent thing that kind of keeps circling back to and going like, yeah, but like it still tastes like black cherry a little bit. Um, I think comes through the most with me. You know what's a fun observation about this too, Chris? And I think you'll jump in on this. Nobody is being overwhelmed with vanilla. Oh no! no. So, so they're using they're using French oak, and um, like I said, it's only forty percent. So sixty percent is completely neutral oak. They have a little bit of new French oak, which you, it helps with some spiciness. Um, but if you use young American oak, which is commonly used in Napa, that's where you get all that vanilla and dill flavor coming from. Um, which I'm not saying that's bad, but I am enjoying. That this is giving me something different. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the, I think I think that really helps it, and it helps separate it from the, you know, uh, I don't know what people usually associate with the the, the California cab that has right. that cupcakey, very sweet thing happening, which mm -hmm. is very similar to this, but way sweeter and way less like interesting, but. Yeah. Yeah, this is um this is more of a French styling, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah, it's uh because it, they're they're letting they're letting the fruit and the terroir speak through a lot more because here you have some barrel maybe enhancing a little of the spiciness, but not in any way overwhelming, and trying to force it into being something it's not. And there are some really really popular brands that use very young aggressive oh, oak, and that's okay. But I I enjoy this this styling. Uh, to me a little bit more. This is more of what the style was when they first came on to the world scene from Napa. They were more- Which of, was the 70s? Were, the 70s. Yeah. So 70s and 80s, it was a bit more of a French style. That big oak Californian style had not quite developed. It was not the original. It wasn't always that way. They hadn't established themselves yet, so they couldn't do their own thing. They had mm -hmm. the- they were emulating the French, style the French style. to try and get respect mm -hmm. worldwide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though, honestly, I really do. I like it when I can taste a little bit about where where the grape came from. Sure. It's uh, it's my preference. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's jump back to the slides. Okay. Okay. So, oh, wait. Hold on a no. second. I see from Bubbles and Kiwi it says tannin. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Do you have a, because we talked about a little bit. But I, uh, so I love this wine. And I thought when John first opened it and he was like, oh, this is big. And I was thinking like cab big. Mm -hmm. um, but the tannin seems so nice. And I yeah, really, they are. see they're mm -hmm. velvety. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just yeah. velvety. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. That's right. Myra, you've come so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think your um I think your threshold for tan and enjoyment has grown. A lot. Yeah. Thank a lot. you. I definitely uh, have like, obvious tannins to where I would not have recommended this for you in the store. So the fact that you're like, I love this makes my heart so happy. Yeah. <laughs> I also let it I guess he opened it so it breathed for a little while. Mm -hmm. And so I let we let it breathe again private school education um so I wasn't sure you know I you know swirled it around a little bit enjoyed mm -hmm. it but I absolutely love this I had it with dinner and then I or not with my full meal but I had dinner sampled a little bit and then had a piece of chocolate with it <laughs> oh yes oh chocolate nice. that's, that's a good call yeah. yeah that's really nice and it so does it's um at the beginning the tannins, is, as it's opened up, um, have rounded. Mm -hmm. And it is like, remember I said they were a little nippy before? Yeah. They're not in yeah. Now they're round. Yeah. Yeah. And so they do. They, I, <laughs> I always describe it as they kind of inflate mm -hmm. as they take a breath. Yeah. Because it, and they come in kind of needly mm -hmm. and then they, they round out. Sure. And, um, and that's kind of a lot of times what you're looking for as you age a wine to get the, the tannins to relax a little bit. And, but this, was able to do it just by taking a 20, 30 minute breath. And, uh, I'm glad you guys all like it as much as I, I was really, really impressed when they brought this to me about six months ago. Do you so. know if it's, this may be a dumb question. If, is it, as it is opening, mm -hmm. is it like molecularly changing? You know? It's gotta be. It, okay. I mean, I, I can't tell you the specifics of it, mm -hmm. but it isn't, it's an interaction with the oxygen. Okay. So yeah, it's so kind of it is like if we if we examined it like under a microscope, it would look different as it. That's uh, my assumption is yeah. Okay. I think it's a chemical reaction, which is uh, why we're we're tasting different things as it okay. moves along. Yeah. It I oxidizes. Would, uh, it yeah. oxidizes. That's why you put it through an aerator if you mix the oxygen. With that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lisa, Lisa had a good observation. Chad and Lisa are with us this week. Yeah, so basically, um, like I really liked it when at first I could taste all the berries initially. Um, then I got a little drunk. I'm not going to lie. But as it's warmed up, everybody's happy for you. <laughs> as, as I, I can really I'll be in there too. Spiciness on my tongue. I mean, it's like very, very spicy now. Sorry, she's the farthest away. She's saying right. like spice. Sure. Spices are coming out as it warms up. Right. Yes, I agree. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It really has. Once it takes a breath and warms up a little bit, it is. You're right. Um, good call. The spiciness really comes out, and so it is. You, in the beginning, you're enjoying. Oh, it's a, it's a it's a nice fruit without being off the rails mm -hmm. um, and with dryness. And then later on, you've got this wonderful complexity of spiciness coming out. It retains the floral character. If anything, there's more floral character mm -hmm. now with a little bit of violet. Um, no, you're, you're, you're totally right. That's, this wine really has, um, it, as it opened, it's enjoyable the whole time, but as it's opened up, it's got great character. It really does. For sure. Yeah. Uh, more, more. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I think, I think as it opened up and as it warmed up, um, yeah, I got a lot more of that um, maybe clove or Robin mentioning like almost like mold wine type of thing. Like it's not quite baking spicy, all spicy, but you do get some of that. I think through. totally go clove. Totally. Yeah, clove yep. is really I think what, what's, what's really come through. Um, especially because when we opened it again, ours was probably a little bit colder than it should have been. Um, we just left yes. it for too long. Yes. Um, but 
uh, yeah, as it has warmed up and as it's kind of just sat around, I'm like, oh yeah, no, you do get that spiciness to it. You do get, like I said, clove, I think is the thing that comes through the most. No, and I think that honestly, I think it's an interesting point because early on I said cedar and everyone's like, oh yeah, cedar. I'm not even getting cedar anymore. Now that it's relaxed, it's more clove. Mm, right. Yeah, clove's dominant, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's relaxed. And honestly, now that it's warmed up enough and it opened, um, as I was sipping, I was getting a little bit of, I could just finally get a little whiff on the back of my palate of the oak showing up. Um, it's, a, it's almost a nutmeggy kind of quality. Just at the end of your sip. My office. Okay. I don't taste clove at all. So did I, am I broken again? I don't taste it either, Myra. Okay. So, <laughs> I don't either. Like little... No, I don't. But, I, but my palate isn't what yours is. So. Sorry. I've had beers aged on cedar, and it always sounds like a good idea, and I <laughs> don't like them. So I, I don't get the cedar, and that's a good thing for me. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily get the clove, but I do taste like the mousse, which would make sense with the uh, the whole licorice theme that we talked oh, about. Right. I'm getting flush in my cheeks, so it's probably a strong wine. <laughs> Normally, I don't get flush in my cheeks. <laughs> Lisa's normally a white wine drinker. She's like, ooh, a glass of red, I'm good. <laughs> Very mellow, but I just have to say, my own bad decision was ordering Thai food and drinking this wine. <laughs> oh, that is, uh, yeah, that is not the pairing you want to go for. No, not at all. No, I, no, I got some stuff like, for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Thai okay. food. Oh, yeah. It's not a good thing. Oh, no. This. You, yeah. you want to go with something like a mm -hmm. um, like a, a Riesling or something like that. It would be fantastic. But that's all right. We'll fix you up. Let's jump back. It could be a niece, if that's what you're saying. But it could be a niece plus. All right. So uh, this guy's in the um, 90. 90 point range. So 90 pointer. At the beginning of an outstanding wine, um, I I have nothing to add to this. You know, I I'd say, look, I think this is this one makes me very happy. You know, this yeah. is the character. It's got we just we were able to discuss it. It wasn't linear. It wasn't just a one note wine. Um, no, it evolved. <laughs> and uh, I, I just think uh, I I'd, I'd go ninety minimally. Yeah. I had this wine in Auburn. <laughs> you remember from last week when I was like, I had it in Auburn, and you were like, No, no, you did not. You got very oh, yeah. upset last week. Well, I couldn't believe they had I it. I was teasing you, yeah. but you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so. I had a different decoy. Oh, yeah, but like the mm -hmm. regular decoy, which is good. The re regular decoy is good, it's mm -hmm. just a different one. This is very good, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice. This is, this is better than what I had. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. So, what do you yeah, think so, about the score? The score. Yeah, I'm I'm going ninety ninety one easy. That's what I was going to say ninety ninety one. Yeah. yeah, that's what that's what I would do yeah. that. Yeah. Because I agree with Kiki. I really like this wine. Mm. Yeah. I just really. Oh my gosh! I'd some spare ribs or mm. filet mignon and. Ooh, filet. Right. Yeah. That would be great with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, uh, it, it's. That's what it's for. What are you guys thinking? Like, what would you rate it? What did you What did you all score that week? That wine last week? That I feel like that was you scored that higher. Shakalaka. Yeah, I thought I called that one in eighty nine. I don't remember. I think I settled on like eighty nine, eighty eight ish. I think most people in the group were around the like 91 because okay. y'all was just like i think i'll go in 89 and everyone was like this is above a 90 and i was like sorry to yeah. say this is yeah, only no, very I, I, good and I, not uh, outstanding i think i probably called it a 90 but yeah. but i think i topped out about 90 so um because i was comparing it to some other wines that had about those ratings but um I think and the shakalak is great. It is. It's delicious. I, I get that any day of the week. So you guys saying that this one should be well above that, like at what a ninety-two or something? David, I, David that's my opinion. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Here's but that's my, what I want. I want your opinions. Yeah. 
I think this is, this is, I did not, everybody else loved the shakalaka, I did not. Okay. That's just me. We but, had one, one week that, that I won't say what it was, but there was one that everyone else raved about it and I kept like moving my glass away every yeah. time Jeff kept trying to refill it. Like stop uh, refilling it. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, I thought it was fine, but I wasn't really. There, there are wines that will and not it wasn't connect the with shakalaka. You. It was a different one. But. Yeah. So, we're, so we're shit talking shakalaka a week later. Is that what we're? We doing? are not. No. We like shakalaka, but, but David's saying he likes this one more. No, David's saying if shakalaka, right? If shakalaka was a ninety, because he's like saying even, this one would be. This a would be like a ninety-two. You need to spread yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. That's that's what yeah. David's saying, but that doesn't have to be your opinion. I'm not shit talking it, but that's not even close to this in my world. Okay. Okay. But well, they're both good in different ways. Who's talking it? Right. 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 I, yeah, I agree. You have to go on the internet. They're they're both good in different mm. ways. I, I agree. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. I agree. They're, they're very different wines. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though they're both nice dark reds, um, they're very different wines. They are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I think the shakalaka we had on the 90 side of 89. Yeah. I agree. I think that yeah. was the consensus, Jerry. Yeah. I think you're totally right. Yeah. And I think we're comparing, is... comparing it with itself, not with something else. Right. 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 Can you what? Uh, see behind here to yeah. see what I'm talking about. So you can just grab this and move it. Oh, see? Good. There you go. Put it on Australia. <laughs> All right. So you guys are now in Australia, just so you yeah, know. Yeah, he just moved like the grid of people down yeah. so he can look up here yeah. at the United couldn't States. See, I couldn't see my, my United States. Anyway, so here we are. Your United States. Mine, yes. <laughs> I don't have to say my joke. Um, so uh, here we are. We're kind of right in the center of the growing region. We all know it's obviously Napa is a very, very special place in the world. It's mm -hmm. You know, it's it is what it is. It's uh, you know, it's not going to surprise anybody that Napa is fantastic. Um, when you run across, it's interesting because they run more towards Spain, even though they fancy themselves after the Bordeaux, hmm. uh, which is significantly north. Yeah, it's of a, where I mean are. that's a good jaunt. It is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because they're more in line with Spain, Portugal. Right. Then yeah. But what we're talking about here, um, you know, over here, you've got all the Pacific, cold Pacific Ocean with this huge effects, which I'm sure is the deal. You know, it, that's that's the thing is it's giving this the effect of something much further north. So like the Atlantic, where it hits our coast is much warmer than the right. Pacific Ocean because um, it's shallower and everything. Is it the same on the European side? Like, is the Atlantic warmer than the Pacific yeah. where, when it hits Europe too? Yeah, okay. it is. Well, especially, don't forget, like, there are coconuts that grow up in um, Ireland because they go through the Gulf Stream. Wait, there are coconuts? There's, there are, are coconuts. All right, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 See, really? Yeah, yeah, they survive. They That's come here and, they, and because of the warmth, of the uh, Gulf, you know, of the Gulf Stream, mm -hmm. there are coconut trees on the coast oh. of Ireland. That's very cool. Yeah. I think there's a lot of cold currents in the Pacific running across north. Yeah. Uh, north. Humboldt's current runs along the South American continent. I don't know if it continues into California, but that's that's why you see the California beach movies and nobody's in the water. It's too blessed. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just too cold. You see, in order to get in the water, they have to wear a wetsuit. Right. So different from us. Yeah, it is very, very different. Yeah. <laughs> and hence, we have no grapes. We, we have no grapes. We have muscadine. There yeah, you go. Right. <laughs> we have no grapes. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, let's give it away. So, that will bring us to next week's wine. Okay, wait. Mm -hmm. Before next week's wine. Okay. Does anyone have any last questions or comments about this week's wine? Before, wait. Kiwi, are you asking a question or are you just putting it close to the camera? I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Kiwi. Couple more bottles. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm taking a Jack approved picture right now with my fire. Oh, perfect. Nice. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to mute myself now. Any other <laughs> questions <laughs> before, before we reveal what is next week? 
I have one question. When you didn't think you were going to get the Cabernet in, you talked about um, possible blend. Was it a limited blend also? Yes, it was the limited blend. I and wanted what's to be it like? related. No, it's um, so that one has a lot more. It, it's also Cab, it's Cab Merlot um, Petit Verdot, if I remember correctly. And uh, it's so it's got a little more spiciness to it, a little less tannin. And um, I mean, it has a larger percentage of Merlot. So it's got a little bit more of those purpley qualities. Uh, it's delicious it's as well. It's decoy as well? It's, yeah, it's this, okay. um, because I was worried that it was a long story, but okay. they did not deliver my two cases of cab that I needed for this tasting. <laughs> <laughs> and they left me high and dry and I was getting really worried. Brenda came in, a couple of people came in and I said, I don't know if the if they're really going to get it to me, but mm -hmm. they did bring it by noon on Monday, which is unheard okay. of. My rep did a great job. Shout out to Spencer, wonderful job. But um, I didn't know that they were going to get it to me after the mistake. Okay. And so I thought, as a backup, I'll do the decoy red blend and the decoy cab, and we'll just talk about both of them. Okay. So that's why Brenda brought that okay. up. Luckily, it didn't have to do it. <laughs> but it's terrific too. I mean, it they're worth all of them are fantastic. Yeah, you should taste away from them. I have a brief question. You talked about the the decoy Merlot that we might taste in the future. I in my world, I want I want I don't want to force everybody else into a wine tasting where we have two bottles, but right. I, I like the comparison. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be a really interesting concept to taste you know, a, a Cabernet against a Merlot or a... Well, that would be... That if would I got to taste two bottles, then I got to taste two bottles. Well, just... Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To say, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> being in I'm, mind, I'm and, so bummed, oh, David. I haven't even yeah. met Paul and I love him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, is, um, which would be a lot of fun. We would just have to keep in mind that that, um, that is the Duckhorn uh, Malbec. Excuse me. Ooh. The Duckhorn Merlot. Merlot. So, so it's a $60 that's like one? 55 bucks. Um, and then if you put a cab that was appropriate Comparable. against it, mm -hmm. it would have to be at least this level, if not higher. So you're talking $100. So if you did, for example, if you did the Duckhorn cab versus the Duckhorn Merlot, you're talking oh, about no. 120 bucks between the two, 110. Oh. So, I mean, I'm all good, you know? <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> Let's make so, so you normally do a holiday wine tasting. We do normally. Right. Let's do yeah. a holiday yeah. doing virtual that. wine tasting. If it's the two bottles, we, that. we all get pretty mm -hmm. like this. And then we <laughs> <laughs> I don't get pretty. That's a really good yeah. idea. We and then we enjoy right. the wine tasting as we have and just have the experience because we've not done it yet. So why not do it for a well, special occasion? I think that's a great idea. What, like the Tuesday before Christmas? We, we could. Um, I think it's a great idea. I do. Um, what we decided to do is actually moving up toward Christmas. We're doing single bottles, but we're getting more expensive single bottles each time. So you guys might get like Christmas ideas and that kind of a thing. So like we went to, because, you know, we've been hanging around $25, right. um, but on sales a little bit less mm -hmm. most of the year. And this week we went to 30 on sale was lower, mm -hmm. but you know, and next week we're going to like 46. Okay. And then the week after that, we're going to 50. All right. So. Okay. So hold on. I'm, I'm pulling up the calendar to just look a moment. So next week and then the, oh, so the week after that would be the week of Christmas then. Right. But then the week after that would be the 29th, which would be just before New Year's. Maybe right. we could do a two bottle comparison that. Okay. Yeah, I haven't come up with that one yet because the, the 15th and the 22nd I've already planned. Okay, but the week of and the 29th, awesome. if you guys are down to do two bottles, <clears throat> that we never have to tell me twice. <laughs> <laughs> we do two we bottles won't. anyway, so if you would go ahead and pick the second bottle for us next time, that would be great. <laughs> See, we, we won't be here, but if we know what it is and you have it, we'll buy it and take it with us. And okay. Virtually, okay. do it. 
So Sounds good. plan ahead for All that. Right, I'll do I'll do a cool comparison one. That'll be okay. fun. Yeah, that'll be fun. So that's I the like beginning it. of New Year's. We're going to start off 2021 right. And maybe we won't <laughs> have to like, just like erase that year from our minds. That's right. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, have yeah. a high point. And that's will do that to you. I promise. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> right, so, like the motion were proposed and approved. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> I have a really cool line coming up next week um, that I've had to really pull some strings so many reallys. Um, I've had to pull some strings to bring this guy in. They broke two cases. This is a wine that only had 12 cases in the state of Florida. They broke two of them, bringing them to me. Wow. Killing me. They broke two They of broke them? two of the 12 cases. Wow. I, I said, you have got to find me some more cases because mm -hmm. I need to have yeah, no doubt. But I really wanted to feature this wine. So here we go. We are going to do the. We're going to do a. Uh, uh, we're going to an area of France that we have not gone to yet. Uh, believe it or not, because we kind of run all around. We're going to Languedoc, south of France. The Mas de Damascasac, Languedoc Rouge, is. Uh, you see the the ratings in this guy. Ninety four yeah, points. Ninety two points. Wow. They are considered the basically the Grand Cru of the Languedoc. Uh, Languedoc is kind of the wild west of france they do not have all the rules that the other guys have but they have an incredible area to grow wine um so this is my favorite thing about this guy so you look at this and you say okay they're outside of the main areas of of france um what do they have in here this this red blend is cabernet sauvignon merlot cab franc petit bordeaux and malbec okay that's all bordeaux Right, that that is a Bordeaux red blend. Then they add Pinot Noir, Burgundy. Boom! We're the Wild West of France. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cute song. Right yeah. That's cute. Come on, I'm excited. I you are. I, <laughs> I feel like that's a lot in my mouth right now because that's like so many things. <laughs> <laughs> so um, to shake it up, instead of just writing steak and steak and steak and mushroom. Anyway, hearty stews, beef, mutton. How about mutton? Let's throw that in there. Okay. Mm. I think oxtail, why not? Uh, Mushroom, oh, yeah. roast pork. You can make some oxtail. I'm not. <laughs> but I, I will, I make work. a really good oxtail soup. Do you? Yes. Just ask her. Wow. So see, when we can start going to people's houses, we have to remember all these things. Harry makes right. curry, tofu. Right. Exactly. Yes. I make right. nothing. I buy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry makes really awesome Indian food. He made a dinner for our, his daughter's birthday yesterday that was really good. Oh, wow. It was Jack's birthday yesterday? Yes. Yes. I'm a terrible friend. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I can't wait for this wine. Yeah. Right now. I'm doing it right now. <sighs> well, that's it. Um, so we're going to this great wine. It's, it's beautiful. I'm excited. It's yeah. It's so cool. That sounds great. Yeah. So, um, unusual. Uh, we will actually pretty sure we will. Well, if you take into account that we're responsible for the two broken cases, <laughs> we're going to be responsible for moving more than half of what the state of Florida received this year. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. This is, um, yeah. Anyway, so let's have a toast to this. We can yeah. then talk freely. We'll get, um, Cheers, a everyone. Loose structure. Thank you for coming. Cheers, Thank you all. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.